very much. Um, good morning, good afternoon. We are in week 11. Um, Dedupe and Ferber is our topic today. And we're also going to be talking about match and merge in the Central Discovery Index, how the, uh, the records are built, how they're created, that you search and see um, when you are searching the Central Discovery Index um, scope, if you will, in, in Primo. Um, my name is Jenny Drager. I'm a training services, cons services consultant. Um, Lori LaRoe is also here with me from support. And so she's going to be keeping an eye on the chat and I'm going to be uh, presenting. And so remember, if you send anything in, please, from the little drop down menu, choose all panelists and uh, send it in to that way. She'll be able to see it and I'll be able to see it. For um, use a little bit later. Okay. There we go. So this is our uh, agenda today for today. We're going to first take a look at um, DDUP and Ferber, how they work. You know, what do they look like in Primo? Um, what can you do to them? And then we have a nice testing mechanism built right into Alma. Um, so when you're working on this kind of stuff, you can see how Alma is going to calculate matches or you know duplicates or um, similar works for ferberization. We're going to be talking how you can suppress these options. Not everyone turns them both on. Not everyone turns them on at all. So really it's a decision you make. It's it's there's not a wrong decision. It's just what works for your institution, what works for your users. And if you make a decision today, you can always change it you know, in the future, maybe you're only going to turn one on and later you're going to turn them both on or, or vice versa. You're going to have them both turned on and then scale back later. Um, and then we're going to be talking about that match and merge uh, functionality. In the central discovery index. Okay, so we're starting with how dedupe and Ferber work. And so actually we're going to start right out here. Um, so I'm in Primo. And I'm going to first show you. Uh, we're going to do dedupe first. So when you're searching in Primo B, uh, there are two ways that these redundant records can be combined or grouped in the brief results view. Um, the duplication matching process, otherwise known as deduplication, or we often just say dedupe, involves identifying duplicate records and then displaying one record in the search result. So if I look for so I go ahead and I do my search. Oh, I really didn't need to do an everything search. I could have just done local catalog. Well, oh, here it is. It's our first hit. Um, so you see the metadata is displayed from the first record in the result set. And then the delivery information uh, is created from all the records in the group. So if I, I see here, I can see my location and other locations. Now, if I come in here and click on the title and look at the full record, um, I'm seeing that same message up here. And here are those two different locations. They're actually from two different holding records on two different pips. Now, remember, you may might remember from some of our series, this could be a, a mix of electronic and print as well. And so that's a, you know, let's say you have a journal and you have um, some physical copies and then also electronic or ebooks, the same kind of thing. You're going to see one result up here and then you're going to um, see those holdings, whether, you know, whatever format they are on the full record and a hint to it about up here. And later, I'm going to show you, you can prefer, you can say, you know, if there's a match, show the print, or if there's a match, show the electronic. So that is another setting that you get to set in Alma. Um, okay, so the metadata is displayed from the first record in the result set. The delivery related information is created from all the records in the group. And then Primo V records are, are grouped using the principles uh, we use the functional requirements uh, for bibliographic records published by the IFLA study group. So that those are the rules we're following, if you will. 
Um, so that's an example of deduplication. So let's go take a look at an example of Ferber. Uh, the rules are called functional. Uh, here, this sounds like some exciting reading. Functional requirements for bibliographic records published by the IFLA study group. Let me put that in the chat for anyone who is can't sleep. There we go. <laughs> okay. So let's look at so that that's the rules we use for DDU. Um and then here, let's go into so if I search cat's cradle. This is going to be an example of fervor. And so you see, we have 1 entry here. And you have a couple of options with this entry. Um, and then you can see there are 3 versions found. And so, um, if I look and now, if I click on this. The three versions found, then we're just going to see those records that have been grouped together. This is a little slow today. Here we go. So you can see this is the same book, but three different pub dates. We have our 1963, our 1973, our 1980. Now, this could also, you know, another example of Ferber could be, you know, Hamlet and here's the score and here, you know, here's the script and here's the book and here's the video. So it doesn't always have to be that, you know, you know, Ferberization isn't necessarily the same. The same, you know, format and such, but it is the same work just in different. Um, Expressions, I don't know if that's the right word. So, the record that displays when we look at this in the brief results can be configured to either display information for a preferred record or generic information that pertains to all records in the group. So, I think right now this is the preferred record because I'm seeing this date here and we. Are going to, um, we're going to see, we're going to see that setting. A little bit later. Okay, so let's go take a look at what this looks like in Alma. So I I grabbed the MMS IDs. I got the MMS IDs for these uh, records. And so if I first do my old possum's book of practical cats, you can see when I do the search in Alma, um, and you can see. There were two separate bibs, and if I expand out my inventory, you know this is these are actually like exact duplicates of these bibs with just um, holdings and items attached. So um, we've got the exact same bib, but it is two. But remember, out in Primo, it uh, it only showed one, so it it grouped those together, showed one, and then had the inventory for both um, metadata records. Now, if we go look at Cat's Cradle, just want the title search. We're going to see those three hits. Here's that 1980 printing, the 1973, and then the 1963, each with their inventory. So the, these were the records that were ferberized. Into that one result, I clicked on it. We saw these three individual records. And then the inventory was under those. So we do have, we're going to dip into this test utility and then we're going to come back into it after I talk about something else that we've added to Alma. So under configuration, discovery, under the other section, there is the dedupe and Ferber test utility here. And so <clears throat> records are processed for dedupe and Ferber in, in several steps. First, a key is generated uh, for each record by taking select fields. I'm going to grab this MMS ID because I, I can kind of illustrate it here as I describe it. So let me put that in there. Paste. There we go. Uh, 
So first, a key is generated for each record by taking select fields, normalizing them, and concatenating them. Uh, Primo V then hashes the keys, turning them into a number, and adding a coefficient that indicates the priority of the key. So here you can see the, the source of the key, what we're matching on, and then here you can see that each element, and then what this hashes, you know, it turns into this key text, and then here's the key that gets generated. So now that each record has a key, the system can compare the records and assign them group IDs. And now if I, I can open, I've got some links for you as well. Come on, click giant mouse. I am hitting control. Here we go. So this is in the understanding dedupe and Ferber process, calculating the keys. So this is just a little more background. Better take a look at that. I just shared that with you. So talking about what the keys are. Uh, the key type, which mark field it's looking at, um, Dublin Core, if you're using that. And then the key type, one versus two. So one, I believe, is for books, and two is for serials. And I'm going to share some other links with you or show you some links a little bit later. Okay, so let's get back here into this test utility. Um, okay, so we saw that, and there's also the dedupe and Ferber key definition. So mapping, mapping Ferber key fields, you'll see normalization method. We're going to see this in a little bit here too. So a lot of information on that um, screen. The algorithm is not fully transitive, which means that two records might have a matching common record, but they're not considered matches themselves. So, in other words, A could equal B and B could equal C, but that does not matter, or um, but that does not mean A will equal C. We also have this is some new functionality we've added. And let me get to where I want to be. Here we go. Um, you could configure keys um, for, you could configure dedupe and fervor com complete keys in Primo V. So you could see the existing keys and create new ones. This is under config, discovery, other, and then dedupe fervor complete key combination. So let's go in here. get where I want to be. We do Ferber key combination. Here we go. This one down here. And so this is where we can see those existing keys. Um, you can all, you can, you know, edit these, delete these, and that, but you always have that option to restore to go back here, to go back to that default. Now, um, and you'll see here, there's a tab for the dedupe side, and then there's a tab for the Ferber side. So dedupe, there's a lot more keys, Ferber's a lot um, fewer. Now, if you want to add a new key, what you would do here is say, add complete key, choose the key type, And then what do we want to match? Let's say, um, oh, okay. Let's say I want to make a match. I wonder if I already, I don't know if I cleared this out. Um, I want to match on my records ISSN 
So that's a serial. So it's type two. Um, so if I come in here, that is the F3 key. That's ISSN, and I would know that by going back to that documentation. And then what's the normalization method? I know, so we have these options, fuzzy string, remove common words, route number, split. Since this is a, a, a number, we would choose split. And then um, if this is optional, I would check that box. If it's not optional, if it's required, I would leave that unchecked. Now I might have a duplicate in here. There we go. Now, how I knew about the type and those normalization methods is right back on that document here. What does the fuzzy string mean? What does the round number mean? What does remove common words? And then what does split mean? Uh, so someone quickly asked, what is the difference between dedupe and Ferber functions? Well, the, the output is, you know, they're, they're different end games, if you will. A dedupe is the same record. It might be different formats, but it's truly a duplicate of those materials where Ferber, you know, and Ferber functions, you know, what it's looking for to match so that the matches kind of have two different ways they're looking at things. So I'm going to hit cancel here. Um, if you do create a new key, you want to make sure you click apply configuration. And that'll cause a refresh so that um, if you then go back to the test utility, those changes are made and applied to anything new. So we can see here with the DDU, you know, we're matching these different elements to look for those duplicates. If I go to Ferber, we're matching on a lot looser criteria, if you will. We're matching uniform title, maybe an author title key. And yes, you can add more, but there just there aren't as many options with Ferber. Okay, so we created a new complete key. Oh, I did want to mention you can have, have add up to five keys in a single complete key. Um, and then you have to click that apply configuration, and then you can go back to that Ferber uh, dedupe and Ferber test utility to see if your key changes are working as expected. And I do have a link to this document about configuring complete keys in the PowerPoint. Which is here. There we go. So let's go back and take a closer look at this test utility. So you have this available to you at all times. Um, let's go back in here, discovery, other. Here's the test utility, okay. So here we can uh, search for a record, find its matching dedupe and Ferber records. And you can also compare two records to determine whether or not they belong to the same Ferber or dedupe group. So we're going to go back to our same example that we saw at the beginning. So I'm going to put in my metadata or my um, MMS ID. I'm going to put in dedupe and find matching records. So we can see all the keys that were generated. And then down here at the bottom, this is that matching record. So this was identified as a duplicate. This is how you know, Alma and Primo will see it. And if I look at view mutual keys, you can see these are all the matches between those two records. So why, why, did, why was this calculated as a duplicate? This is why all these matching points. Uh, 
Um, okay, so we saw that. We could also, you can just see, you know, view the keys that it has. But the mutual keys, you know, gives the, the, the key there. Now, I have a second tab here called compare records. So this carried over that first MMS ID that I had. So let's say I have two records and I just want to see what all my primo think of them. So I can put the two record IDs in here. And we can see where they matched. So these are those that same title. Now there was one key that didn't match, but that's okay. They're still duplicates. So they don't have to be absolutely identical. But they need enough. Let's say if I enter, I'm gonna I'm gonna enter in a different copy record ID here. Something that's absolutely not a match. And you can see there's that title, here's this. So very different books, not matched. So you can compare any two records that way. So that's DDU. Now let's go take a look at Fervor. And I'm gonna go back to my Find Matching Records tab. And I'm gonna go to Fervor. And click on Find Matching Records. So this is that cat's cradle. We had two complete keys to go through. And they found those two matching records. So the dedupe had a lot of keys generated. The Ferber only has two here. And if I have any matching records, I can see their information as well. So I still have those same options. View the mutual keys. So just author title, that was enough for the Ferber match. Now, if I go over to compare records and I can use the same utility, we'll check the Ferber, you know, again, between two records, you could see the key that matches the one that doesn't, but that's okay. Enough of a match for Ferber. Now, if I say, could these be dedupes? No. No, they cannot. There's, you know, it might have the same author title, but there's other differences to keep them from being uh, deduplications. Now, if I come back here to the Find Matching Records tab, I want to point out this button right here. Um, this option allows you to recalculate dedupe and fervor groups after updating a record's metadata. Um, so let's say you were working on a record, it should have been a you know a duplicate or fervor. You go back, you update that the metadata record, you would want to recalculate the fervor and dedupe groups before trying to run it again. So you've made edits to the bid record done any cataloging, you know, added new records, whatever it is, to see how the keys behave. So those were the complete keys we got to make. We saw the test utility. So let's talk about um, suppressing dedupe and fervor. So you not not everyone turns um, these features on. Some might only do one. There are several methods to prevent uh, records from being deduped or fervored. The first is to you can define suppression rules, which are basics uh, based on types of records. The rules are then applied during re-indexing when new records are loaded or when an existing record uh, records metadata is modified. Or you can 
um, disable dedupe and fervor entirely in the primo view. And that's at the view level. Um, if I, this applies to all records that, and doesn't involve adding or changing rules or running any jobs. So this is to the right here is just the big light switch, turn it on, turn it off. But the suppression rules allow a little more targeted um, selection of records that um, won't won't um, be duplicated. So to add a suppression rule, I think I've already got one in here. I can come into configuration, discovery, other, you know, my favorite category here, other, and suppress, dedupe, and fervor. So I've got one in here for images. That's what I created. And if I just come and edit this, I just had to give it a name and a code and at least one condition. So you, and now are you suppressing both dedupe and fervor or only dedupe? So those are your choices here. Um, when I do add a condition, so if I add a condition, you can see I have options under inventory, local fields, and metadata. Those are my choices here to create these uh, conditions. So, and in this case, this was metadata, and I said if it's an image, you know, we're not gonna we're not gonna um, dedupe or fervor these records. You can have up to two conditions for a rule, but if you do have multiple conditions down here, they both have to be true to suppress the records. Okay, so I've got all that set up. Now, if I want to, um, once I create this rule or rules, Maybe I've created more than one here. Um, how I run and um, utilize this rule. So, so if I want to uh, use this rule on existing records, I would need to go out of config and go into admin, run a job. And this one, it's called prevent. Looking through that whole list. Prevent, fervor, and or dedupe in discovery. Now I would need a set of records that I want to apply this on. So let's say I had a bunch of, in my case, images, and I wanted to make sure they weren't going to be deduped or ferberized. I would choose, you know, run this job, run my, um, this is a small group, use my set of records. Do I want to prevent ferber? Yes. Do I want to prevent dedupe? Yes. On those conditions I created in those rules. And you just run the job. So, if you want to, uh, so that's this tool. Now, if you want to prevent the display of Ferber and DJU groups for all records without changing rules or running any jobs, you can disable Ferber and DJU. In the view, so let's go to discovery, configure views. I'm using jeans right here. I'm going to edit this, and I'm going to go to my brief results tab. If I scroll down a little bit, here this is where we can see dedupe and fervor. Um, if records are, you know, if they've been grouped with the fervor rules. How do I want to sort them within that group? Um, if I'm with, with the Ferber, do I want to have that preferred? So the preferred versus generic. Preferred gives a little bit of metadata information. When we saw this preferred uh, record, see how there was a pub here? That's that preferred view. I'm also seeing these. Uh, covers. If I had the generic view, I wouldn't even have that much information showing out here. 
So you might prefer one, you might prefer the other, no problem. Um, just test them out, see what they look like. You know, use them in your, um, test them out in your sandbox. If you have this preferred criteria for Ferber display, you can add the criteria. So date newest based on resource type, based on um, availability. You know, maybe I just want the newest one. Show that newest one. Do I want to enable Ferber in this view? Do I want to enable dedupe in this view? And so, <clears throat> and then down here, criteria for the dedupe preferred record. So if you have, you might have something that's print and electronic, which bib record do you want to, or the, the title record? Which one do you want to um, prefer and show? Now, my example, I had uh, to print, so the electronic didn't come into play. But these are some ways you can customize what shows in that brief results tab. And remember, this is a setting at the view level. Okay, let's go back here. And take a look at match and merge. Let's get through this. Boom, boom. Get out of there. Okay. So let's talk about match and merge in the central discovery index. I said, um, if you were a previously a summit customer, this might be familiar to you. Um, it's the it's um <clears throat> so what is match and merge? This is a system for improving the search results retrieved from the central discovery index. Um, it does this by matching three primary functions, deduplication of citations, optimization of metadata, and the optimization of access. So when we talk about the dedupe of citations, what, we, what happens is we get content from a wide variety of sources, and we'll have more than one record for a given citation. In some case, we have as many, you know, we, we might have dozens of duplicates for the same citation. And then displaying all of these records separately would confuse users, make it harder for them to find what they're looking for. So we want to display all the records um, we have for a given citation to work together as a single result. Uh, with regards to optimization of metadata, when we get the, the, the quality and completeness of the metadata may vary between different records for the same citation. So combining these records, we take the best metadata from each of the records and present the user with the highest quality and most complete metadata that we have available for that citation. So, so we don't prefer one, one record over another. We, we take all those metadata elements to create like this super record. Um, and then with regards to optimization of access matching, uh, merge, ac merge also allows us to provide the user with the best and most reliable link to the content for any given citation. Now, how do we do this? Records are, from vendors are merged into logical records. A logical record consists of two or more physical records called participant records. So those records we get from providers, those are the participant records. Um, they represent a combination of all available metadata points. And then the output is a single comprehensive record that can be surfaced by the discovery layer. So we have some rules about match and merge. And this is all on um, a link I'll, I'll share with you here. Uh, match and merge gender generally relies on various kinds of identifiers. If two or more records share the same identifier, they can be merged. If they also satisfy other criteria, uh, depending on that identifier, for example, title, 
Um, fuzzy match title is a comparison of two records combined document title and com and document subtitle fields. Disregarding any um, case white space punctuation diacritics or other special characters. So now in our documentation, like the DOI digital object identifier requires a fuzzy title match. This would not apply to electronic journals or journals. The PMID also requires a fuzzy title match. Also does not apply to journals and e-journals. The ISBN and EISSN also require that fuzzy title match. Years of publication must be within one year of each other. For ISSN, EISSN, publication place or pub year must also match. Applies only to journals and e-journals. For LCCN, for journals and e-journals, pub place or pub year must also match. For a book or e-book, dissertation gov doc, then the fuzzy title match is required and the year of publication must also match. And then the OCLC number also uses the same rules for LCCN. So for internal identifiers, if records have an ISSN, EISSN, ISBN, or EISBN, they're assigned an identifier internal to Ex Libris that corresponds to that relevant to the relevant title. And then match and merge is done using this identifier in different circumstances. And the process works differently for title and pub level records. Pub level applies to newspapers, magazines, journals, e-journal, book, and e-book. So in that case, for the publication level, it only the title level identifiers need to match to create these records, the, the record in CDI. Where article level, that's where we're talking about journal, journal article, magazine article, newspaper article, trade publication article, book review, conference proceedings. They need the title level identifier, the document title, year of pub, volume issued, start page all have to match. That's how you see that, you know, that one article can come from all those different. We, we get the best metadata and then we can link you to your source in all about there. However, you subscribe to that art that uh, article. Um, other scenarios, reference records, they can merge based only on a fuzzy title match. That reference up at the top of the screen. Dissertation records can be uh, merged based only on a URI for direct link. Now we do have some situations, some filters where records cannot be merged. These are the inverse of those rules. They dictate under which circumstances records cannot be merged. Filters supersede rules in cases where both potentially could be applied. So we err on the side of not putting them together. Mismatch metadata. If any of the following data, if these data elements are mismatched, the records will not merge. Um, other filters here, records identified as being from an institutional repository will not be merged. Records um, having the content type newspaper article and a date of publication prior to um, January 1st, 2000 will never be merged. The record exclusion flag, we can flag specific records to be excluded from match and merge. This is typically done at the express request of the content provider or uploading client. So they tell us that. And there are a few content providers that have requested this record exclusion flag. Art Store, Cabby Direct Content, and CARN, C-A-I-R-N, International Journals. And this is all on a page I'm gonna show you. So bad titles, that's a list an internal list of explicitly short and generic titles that we don't want to merge at all because of the high probability of false positives. And then the last um, filter is the overmatch. 
So if we have a record having a title that occurs on over more than 4,000 records in the index, it won't merge. Then this last um, section here, any of these content types will not merge. Archival material, image, microform, music recording, patent, report, technical report, standard, or video recording. So we talked about transitivity earlier with uh, dedupe. Match and merge transitivity. <clears throat> a transitive merge is a scenario where three or more records are merged, where at least two of the records would not be able to merge on their own. So record A could, man could merge with record B and record B could mer merge with record C, but record A would not, not ordinarily be able to merge with record C. But because of the commonalities that both records A and C share with record B, all three records can be merged into the same logical record. This is important for us to do in CDI because it allows us to leverage enrichment records, which might include supplementary supplemental metadata like the full text of an article. Enrichment records get merged only with their parent metadata record. But with this transitive merge, we can merge it with other records for the same citation. This way we can surface metadata from those enrichment records more broadly than we otherwise would. Okay, so now let's talk about match and merge facts. Turn the notes made here. There we go. So local records in local Primo indexes will not match and merge with records from the CDI. Records uploaded to CDI by clients are eligible for merging. Uh, match and merge is vendor neutral. We don't care where we get the, the records from who gives us the records. We just Put them in the central discovery index. We run them through this match and merge process, and we create that um, <clears throat> the record for you. Identical values from specific fields coming from the various records making up the logical records will be merged for display and search. Here's this match and merge documentation. And a lot of the stuff I just said is on this page, including those vendors that asked us to, you know, not ever mark theirs. And I have it in the PowerPoint. Just sent that um, link for you here. Where we get the content. Here are those rules, internal identifiers, the filters, match and merge filters, excluded content types, the vendors that asked us to put that record exclusion flag on their content. And then some good FAQs down here. Okay, I've seen some questions come in and Lori's answering them. Lori, is there anything I need to go back to? Um, well, we've gotten a lot of questions. Uh, I haven't gotten to all of them, uh, but uh, I don't think there's any just general things to go back over. Okay. You have this tool and, you know, running this tool in your production environment isn't going to hurt anything. You're not going to change anything. So, 
the test utility. If you want to get a little heavier into it, you might, you know, take your records and put them over in the uh, in your sandbox to test them over there. And all the questions that have come in, we're going to put them in um, in the Q and A deck, also. I saw a question come in. What about non-musical sound recording? Is it is it treated the same as a musical sound recording? I don't. Is that in relation to dedupe, Ferber, Batch, and Merge? I I don't know what that was in relation to. All of the above. <laughs> well, <clears throat> records being oh, Match and Merge. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Can EXL support, can Xlabor support export a list of local MMS IDs that are deduped? This can help with finding certain candidates for recalculating. Sure about that. Oh, one of the slide mentioned musical sound recordings. Oh, right here. Gotcha. Let me find out. Let me let me do a little uh let me do a little more work on that. So it doesn't, so, cause non-musical, wouldn't that be like an ebook or something? Audio book, something like that. Or, oh yeah, oral history. Let me see what I can find out. Oh, we have thousands of oral history recordings. Ooh. I'm going to look where you are. <laughs> Those are neat projects. Well, and if they're yours, are they are they in the CDI? Because Match and Merge is all about the CDI, remember? So if they're your records, they're not going to... Match and Merge is about the, con the, the citations you get out of the CDI. It doesn't have anything to do with your local records. It's how we create these, how we create the content that we show to you when you do that central discovery index search. Because Gail might give us the citation and EBSCO and JSTOR and the publisher itself, everyone and their brother gives this the citation information for an article. And we get it, let's say, you know, we get six, six things of citations from this article. And so when we get it in the CDI, instead of showing all those six, we take that metadata, create this logical record, and that's what shows, that's what search, that's what shows to you, the searcher. Um, is it possible to turn off dedupe fervor at the network zone level so suppression rules can be fully contro controlled by institute individual institutions? Well, I, I guess it would depend on because the net it, it would depend on the search profile. So the short answer is yes. 
because like this is this is a network zone. Oh wait, that's not the network zone level though. But if I train Alma, here's the network zone environment for this. Fingers here. Let's see. Because you can have that search profile slot for that includes the discovery network. So if I come in here, oh, I don't want to do that. I'm sorry. I'm in the wrong place. Configure views. Okay. So here's an NZ view and here's an NZ union view. So if I come in here to this and go to the brief results, you know, you still have that option down here. Can I add on to that, Jenny? Yep. Um, so the um, the DDoop and Fervor grouping is actually done at the level of the network owner. So if you have an IZ record that's linked to the NZ, in order to suppress that record from DDoop and Fervor, you do need to run that job, the suppression job in the NZ, since it's that NZ record is is owned by the NZ, and that's what needs to be suppressed. So there's really no way kind of around that at this time, other than, you know, unlinking IZ records from the NZ. And when you don't want to do that, that would cause a bigger mess. And talk with your network zone managers about these settings. You know, collectively. Thank you for that. So, and Lori, you're saying that even if, if this is turned off up here, would you then control it at the IC? Well, so this will control this view, uh, this network zone view, but I think mm -hmm. what um, Cindy was asking is in their IZ, in their IZ view, they want to have DDoop or Server enabled mm -hmm. want to be able to control individual all the individual records in the IZ, whether or not they're forward or deduped. Okay. But that's not uh possible right now with uh when IZ records are linked records. You would you do have to run those jobs in the NZ. Okay. And if that doesn't work for you, you can always submit it as an idea. I'm no programmer, so I don't know how to, <laughs> you know, that might not work just because of the ownership of that record. That might not be something that can be negotiated. <laughs> um, Yeah, it is. There's a, there's a lot going on, especially when you throw that network zone in the record. But if you can, yeah, you can kind of see how the ownership is at that network zone, and so that's where that control is. It doesn't hurt to test. These are not, you know, big, huge changes. So you can 
easily test in your sandbox, enabling, you know, and dedupe and fervor, enabling one, having some examples. Anything else for us today? I'm going to grab the chat. I'm going to work on the Q and a and um, look for the Q and a in the PowerPoint because I want to make a couple more edits to the PowerPoint. Um, copy that. Um, it'll be uploaded tomorrow onto the dashboard. For the series. You've all seen the closing slides plenty of times. Um, we have premium services available. Um, if you have something to share, we'd love to get any feedback in the survey that just comes up. Thanks everyone for your time. I hope you have a great rest of your day and a great rest of your week. Bye. -bye. Thank you, Lori.